Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, this is Friday of Advent, but do you notice we have Our Lady on the right hand side of the altar, again in the sanctuary. We call in this novena, on this octave of the Immaculate Conception, to penetrate the mystery of the Mother. We make no excuses to speak about the Lady. Also today, because we are Franciscans, Marian Franciscans, with our origins in Italy. So today we would have been celebrating the magnificent feast of the flying house, the mystery of Loretto. It was interesting when we was in the seminary, the night before the 10th, we would all gather outside in the freezing cold and in many places in the area of Loretto is located in the, the Mark or the Marches in Italy, next to Umbria, quite near Assisi, and the people would gather in various places and light bonfires. Not like in England, bonfire night, celebrating Guy Fawkes, but for a good tradition, Catholic reason, to guide the angels home, carrying the house to Loreto. And this mystery of the Holy House of Loreto, where the Word was made flesh and where Jesus Christ and Our Lady and Saint Joseph spent over 30 years in silent recollection. We have in this country our own House of Loreto, so to speak, in Walsingham. Remember when Lady Raquelis de Favishes in 1061 received this dream to build a replica of the Holy House. And look what happened in this country, this, in the period in the Middle Ages, Walsingham was the number one marrying shrine in the world. Many thousands and thousands of pilgrimages. Then what can we say about the authentic house of Loreto? This is the walls transported by the angels, not the foundation, but the walls. And if you have the grace to go to this shrine, enter into the silence of this magnificent shrine, and it says a placard in the shrine, this is where the word was made flesh. <coughs> this is where the word was made flesh. If you read the history of the holy house, it was in the times of Constantine, in the beginning of the fourth century, he had a great basilica built over the holy house of Nazareth for its protection. But through the course of time and through the Islamic invasion, especially during the Middle Ages, in the times of the Crusades, the house was moved for safety in case it was destroyed by the Muslims. In the 1291, the Crusaders were finally driven out of the Holy Land, and it was at this point that the Holy House disappeared from Palestine, and then made its appearance miraculously in present-day Croatia, in a shrine called Our Lady of Trzat, or Trizato in Italian. But tradition tells us in May the 10th, 1291, the Holy House of Nazareth was raised from its foundations in Nazareth and transported by the angels across the Mediterranean from Palestine to Dalmatia, to this small town of Trizato. It says beautifully in the tradition, the pastor of the church of St. George in this town, which is called Alexander Georgievich, was puzzled then at the sudden appearance of this little tiny church 
and prayed for enlightenment. His prayers were answered when the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him in sleep, like as in Walsingham, and told him that this was indeed the holy house of Nazareth where the Annunciation took place. And it was brought here through the power of God's providence to confirm what she was telling him he would be restored to health. At that moment, he was cured of an illness which he had suffered from for many years. Going back into history then, the Muslims taking over Albania in 1294, and then there was a, another possibility of profanation of the house. It disappeared then from its location in Torresato. According to some shepherds, it was seen on December the 10th, the anniversary today, 1294, magnificently being borne aloft by angels across the Adriatic Sea and came to rest in a wooded area four miles from Recananti in Italy. The news then, as you can imagine, spread fast and thousands came to examine the tiny house which resembled a little church. The house became the place for pilgrimage and many, many miracles took place. But the bandits from the nearby wooded area began to plague the pilgrims. So the house had to be moved again to a more safe place. The spot where the house was finally to rest was still not settled. Since two brothers who owned the land began to quarrel. <coughs> so the house is moved a final time in the site now it occupies in Loreto. The brothers became reconciled and the holy house miraculously was placed on the ground, as we said, without foundation. The foundation can be found in the original site in Nazareth, but the walls of the house are in Loreto. This is the mystery. Once again, miracles attended the presence of the house and the townspeople of the place where the Sato, where it was originally, came to determine whether it was indeed the house that had been placed in their town and had miraculously disappeared one night. Sixteen men, all of them reliable citizens, took with them measurements and the full details of the house. And several months after they arrived back, reported their opinion that the house had really come from Nazareth. Many holy pontiffs have testified to the authenticity of the holy house. What can we learn then today about this magnificent miracle, God's providence? God knew that we would need examples of how to live the faith well. And he's provided us with numerous saints to observe and learn from in order that we may lead holy lives. Of course, the queen of all the saints in heaven is our Blessed Mother, and she is the ultimate example of living a life in holiness. So many of the saints knew this, and they spent all their lives as we should try to imitate the Mother. The greatest saints, those riches in grace and virtue, would be the most assiduous in praying to the most blessed virgin, looking to her always as the most perfect model to imitate, as a powerful helper to assist them. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this great feast of Our Lady of Loreto today, we must lay the foundations of the house of Loreto, the house of the Holy Family, this house of silence and recollection first and foremost in our interior lives, in our hearts, and let us live in the burning, ardent charity, the queen of all virtues as the Blessed Mother. Of all the virtues that we are called to practice, that of ardent love, sometimes called charity, is the greatest of all. We know this beautiful passage in Corinthians, 
Charity is patient, is kind. Charity envieth not, dealeth not perversely. It is not puffed up, it is not ambitious, seeketh not her own, is not provoked to anger, thinketh no evil. Try then to live with the holy house of Nazareth, the holy house of Loretto, deep in the depths of your soul. Be there interiorly with the mother and Jesus Christ, the son and throne. Jesus Christ is king of your house and the mother is queen. Make the word of God your home also. John 8, 31. If you make my word your home, you will indeed be my disciples. You will come to know the truth and the truth will set you free. The Blessed Mother practiced love, this ardent charity, to a sublime, de sublime degree in two ways. For love, our charity has two dimensions. Mary, at all times and places, loved God first and foremost. However, Mary expressed concrete her love for God by her ardent love for her neighbor. In the Annunciation in the Holy House, through her fiat, through her unconditional yes, Mary showed a total un unreserved love for the Lord. However, <coughs> what did she do immediately? She did not rest in her grandeur in the holy house of Nazareth, but she sought out the help of the neighbor. Up she got swiftly in a jiffy of time and went to visit Saint Elizabeth. So we have to imitate the mother in these two magnificent commandments, to love the Lord your God first, but then to love our neighbor. The love of God compels me. May we learn this double commandment, the love of God and love of neighbor, and strive to live it out on a daily basis. St. John of the Cross states, in the twilight of our existence, we will be judged on love. So penetrate today the mystery of Nazareth, the mystery of Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Ask Our Lady of Loreto today to build this house of charity in the depths of your hearts and souls, amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.